Steve, let's jump to the global page. I've seen uh, some preferences there. I also see some chaos generators. Um, what's going on in that section of Zoom? Yeah, the global page is pretty much all the stuff that wouldn't fit elsewhere, right? So it's sort of your MISC tab. The only stuff that's actually truly global is these preferences that are right below the word global. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is the only stuff that happens on every instance of Serum. If I set it to hide the piano keys by default, for instance, and I save with this button next to preferences, now anytime I add a new instance of Serum, this bottom area will be hidden by default. Got it. Everything else on this page, the chaos oscillators, the unison, and these advanced oscillator settings, this is all just the extended stuff of the patch that we're on. Good to know. And you know, the unison is a section that's pretty in depth, so I think we should cover that in a separate section, but walk us through the chaos uh, generators. Okay, yeah, these two chaos generators are essentially LFOs, and so they are modulation sources. We're not gonna hear them as audio, but we can connect them up to anything that we want. So uh, chaos one and chaos two are actually slightly different algorithms. We have two different sorts of chaos generation going on here. So they both have their own slightly unique flavor. The first one here is called a Lorenz uh, algorithm, and it's a Lorenz oscillator. It has this sort of unique uh, quality of, of sort of having these two different poles, and so you sort of hear either like an A sort of modulation or a B sort of modulation, and it sort of haphazardly deviates between these two, although every oscillation in that side is sort of unique as well a little bit. Can um, we assign it to something and hear it? Yeah, That's absolutely. So the easiest way would be just grab, say, I'm going to use the coarse pitch of oscillator A and select chaos one as okay. the source. Now when I hold down a note, It's can, never exactly the same, but it does have a quality of vibrating at the top, vibrating, vibrating at the bottom, and that's uh, right. oscillating between the two. Yeah, and so this other al algorithm um, is slightly different in that regard. It's, this one uh, feels more like something that sort of has sort of a, somewhat of a pattern to it that starts restarting at different times, almost like someone who's stuttering and has to start a sentence over like Porky Pig, or something like that. So you can hear this. Got it. And that's available uh, under the drop-down menu as a source for any dial that can be automatable. Yes, so you can assign that to any or multiple sources. And there's some few settings here that you can to alter it as well. Um, there's the rate, of course, which is uh, similar to the LFOs, where we can have it either be a time division or not. But given the fact that this is chaotic, the time division is not going to really sound like a banging rhythm, right? We're not going to be really on a beat. So it's sort of more of an approximation, you could say, of if you wanted some sort of something in your mind that you sort of felt you wanted an oscillation to be around. It's sort of a, a fairly a somewhat accurate target for that. Okay. And then the uh, other switch here is mono. And what mono does makes, makes this chaos oscillator global for all notes that are playing. So it can be very different. If you imagine that sort of funny pitch pattern we had going on, you could imagine, do you want that to be happening to all the notes that are happening so they're all pitch bending together as if you were moving the pitch bender crazy? Mm -hmm. Or do you want every single one to have its own crazy chattering going on? And, so, in, and in which switch will it, uh, under mono, all the ones will be doing the same thing? Exactly. Okay. Mono is like there's just one chaos later that's operating, doing the same crazy chaos on everything simultaneously. Awesome. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. That's what the chaos oscillators are good for. Uh, really quickly, we have some oscillator settings over here. There's a fine tuning for your noise, which generally you don't need that if your noise is just a hiss, but it would be nice if you're using the noise for something pitched and you just feel like it's a little out of tune. That's true, because if you go back to um, the oscillator page, um, you don't see a fine, a fine tuning. You do see a coarse pitch, right? There's a coarse pitch, and it's generally good for enough things, but when you go into key tracking mode, I felt that it would be nice to have this really just operate on semitones. So that's the way that this works. Okay. Uh, that way you can really dial it into a certain note, but if it feels like that's out of tune, you can go here to global and set a fine tuned amount. Uh, you know, 90% of the time, you don't really need anything to be in key, which is why I felt it didn't really need to be stuck there on the main page. Makes sense. And felt, felt fine tucked away. But we have oversampling, and this oversampling mode really is just 2x or 4x is the main decision here. 1x is sort of a coming soon feature, which I'm going to add a more uh, you know, sophisticated, low quality mode essentially for the, the 1x. Um, so I recommend to generally leave it on 2x, but if you're doing heavy FM is the main reason that you'd want to do uh, the, the 4x. So if you're using these FM modes uh, down here, 
And maybe, maybe for these modes as well, the sync and the bend, if you really want to have the least aliasing possible, you can put it on 4X, mm -hmm. but there is an expensive CPU going on when you do that, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. For, for most times, the quality of just the oscillators by nature is good enough that 2X is, is plenty. And, and this switch really doesn't do any change at all if you're not using those warp modes. So, so again, which is why it's fine being stuck away on this page. And typically I'd say, don't worry about it. You can just leave it alone. Okay. And then finally we have this pitch tracking, which you can disable. Oh, there it is. If cool. you're doing something like you were trying to make an 808 and you just wanted one pitch across the whole keyboard mm -hmm. and you didn't want the note to change when you played on the keyboard, you can disable uh, the pitch tracking here. Good to know. So in the next section, we're going to be covering the unison section, which has a lot of interesting parameters that I found really useful. Mm -hmm.